Hi, my name is Sasha Bruns and this is Knowledge Graphs, week 3, Query Knowledge Graphs with Sparkle. Today I will guide you through the hands-on number one, where we will learn how to query Wikidata. First of all, um, let's, first of all, there are several ways to query Wikidata and I will talk just and show you just two of them and but you can also, of course, explore further and find further ways in the, through the Jupyter Notebook. So first of all, um, in the first variant, we will query the Wikidata with a package which was developed specifically for this purpose. It, it is called MK Wikidata, and for it we have to install this package. So just to save some time, I already pre-installed it, but please, please do it and then we can also use it. In the next step, we of course import all the required packages from the um, MK Wikidata, and also we would need a pandas to visualize our results. And that, that would be it. We can start. So, first of all, let's do something simple. Yes, for example, um, I would like to take a look at all uh, the narrated cities of books and literary works, and also to find out their geocoordination in Wikidata. Yes, it's quite interesting to see what cities or what places um, all those uh, fantastic or not, or, or not fantastic events are happening and what um, places authors choose more often than others. Um, so you remember from the, uh, from the lecture about Wikidata that um, Wikidata does, uh, uses these Q and P identifiers to access or to identify the resources, so they do not really have specific mm, natural language names, of course. So these here, I added the information for you, um, what kind of um, numbers we will be needing in, uh, for this query. You can also click on them and take a look um, on the natural language representation and human in human readable form, what is this? But it's also quite clear from the query. And we can start. So basically, we will start with a query, just as you have seen it on the, on, on the slides. We would like to see the labels, the, the, uh, the labels of the book, yes, the place labels, and of course, the coordination, how I mentioned it before. First of all, we would um, we define what kind of items we would like to have for, for here. We say, okay, it has to be either book or some literary work. And we want it um, we want an item of this type. And of course, we want some kind of labels, and this labels has to be in English. Yes, so since Wikidata is, l is language independent, it would, um, if we will not define the label or the language tag, this will give us um, labels in all possible languages in there. And we don't want that. So we would like to st stick to English at this time. And of course, for this item, we would uh, like to see the narration place. Yes, so this property is a uh, narration place. And we want some place. And of course, we want also the coordination of this place and its label in English. Let's try it out. Just a moment, and I hope we will see the result. Yes, here it is, and so we see that there is some result, and it's of course in the JSON format, which is which makes it a bit hard to read for humans. But no problem. So we can also say that we would like to um, see our results is in simple pandas and basically transform it. So it makes it much easier. Yes. So here we have the labels of the books. We have the places where it is um, the narration places, where everything is happening, and also we have the coordinates. What is nice in Wikidata is that you can also kind of visualize a query, and this, but for this you have to use a Wiki, uh, Wikidata query service to see that. So I will just show you what, is, what it looks like. Yes, so it is the same query what you have seen, but just in the Wikidata query service, and if you 
if uh, you go down, you will see, of course, this map of all the narration places, yes, and you can also zoom in more to see a more detailed view and, for example, we can see what, um, what kind of books describe events that happen in Paris and so on. So it's very nice. So you can get also much more information and also visualize this kind of information. But let's go further and see what is the most common narration country in Wikidata books and literature works. Yes, so we do not, mm, what is important to say that we do not talk about books and literary works in general, yes. We just talk about the books which are there in Wikidata. And Wikidata can be biased, yes, so we cannot draw 100% um, conclusions about it. But let's see what, it, what is there. So we exactly the same. We take literary works and books, we take the narration places, then from the narration place we uh, take the country, yes, so the place it has to be linked to the country. And we take the country and also we use um, the count, yes, how many books, how many books narra are narrated in what countries. And here we can see that most of the books um, having their narration in the United States, then the United Kingdom is, ca is common, and so on. Also to show you a nice visualization of this query, we can go to the Wikidata query service. It's the same query again, and I chose the bubble chart. So you can see here, which is very nice, and we see, he see here the United States and United Kingdom and so on. And of course, you can play around with it. You can also try um, another labels, for example, yes, not just English um, labels and so on, and see how it changes the result. But we go further. So this would be it. So you can see now that we can query Wikidata with a special package what was developed for querying the Wikidata. However, there is another package in, in, in Python, which is called Sparkle Wrapper, which is um, Sparkle endpoint independent. Yes, so basically you can query any Sparkle endpoint with it. And with, it is really nice. So first of all, we again, we install the Sparkle Wrapper, we import the required uh, packages, yes, we need something JSON, XML, RDF, and everything you need. And with Sparkle, you also determine the Sparkle endpoint you want to query. And let's take a look at the different example, yes. So I was thinking about what interesting information could there be. And I was thinking, okay, there are authors and poets and uh, writers, they <laughs> existed for a very long time, yes. And um, what is interesting in Wikidata is that there is an, an information about how these people died. So let's take a look if, be, if being a writer is actually can be dangerous and how these authors died in there. For this, we exactly, we take a person who, is, who has occupation writer and we take a look at their um, cause of their death. And of course, we want to see, mm, we group it and count it and say, okay, what is the most um, common death cause for writers of all time? Just a second. So it takes some time, um, some time to query it because Wikidata is large. So as we can see, most of the authors die from different kind of, di of diseases. Yes, yeah, so it's, uh, it's interesting but it's something which is pretty common. However, if what, what if you talk about writers that died before 1800? Yes, there were different times, people didn't leave this long. So let's take a look how this will influence the results. For it, I filter all the, um, all the authors by their date of, um, of, of, date of birth. Yes, so the, I say that. Uh, or date of death, sorry. I say that the date of death should happen before 1800, yes? And then exactly the same, what kind of um, cause of death, and I group it, uh, group the authors. And I also order it by descendant, so I, the most, uh, the most um, 
common costes will be in the beginning. So here we see that it's the picture is quite different. Most of the authors that died before 1800 and who are in Wikidata, they died from decapitation, which is sad. But this is what we can see and these kind of statistics are also interesting. So you can also try and explore more, find more information about this. For example, here you can, I will not show it, but you can also um, take a look at the prepared queries, like um, list years in which the most writers were decapitated. Yes, what was the worst year for writers? And also show images of writers who died from laughter. Yes, for example, I also queried it for you. And here there are three writers in Wikidata who, has, who have deaths of, uh, by laughter in their death course, which is um, funny. And in the end, let's take a look at the authors that are still alive, just to finish on the optimistic note. And for example, we, we want to list 100 youngest authors alive from the Eastern Europe. Yes, so the query is a bit bigger, but here see. So we, we take all the writers, we, ha we have their country where they live, since we want to take and filter them just by the Eastern Europe, and we have their birth date. Um, in order to find out how old are they, we would have to um, we would have to take the year what is now, which is 2023, and um, to minus the year of their birth date. Yes, and this would be their age, so logically. And of course, what we want to see, we want to have authors that are alive. So we say that we, d we, f we filter that there is no triple that has a death, call, uh, death date for this person. And of course, we go and filter the countries for the part of the Eastern Europe and uh, order them by age. So we will have the youngest authors in there. And it will take a moment. And let's see. Also with limit 100, I will just show the first 100 authors just to make it a bit more faster. So we see that the youngest author, that or the youngest writer who is in Wikidata is 15 years old and he is coming from Czech Republic. So this concludes our hands-on on querying the Wikidata. I also ask you to add and provide, if, to explore further, to try it out more interesting things and also share your um, interesting queries with us. Thank you very much.